Welcome everyone, and thanks for tuning in. We're so excited to have you all join us in today's all-star webinar session, Take Your Performance Campaigns to the Next Level. Um, we're just going ahead and gonna give everyone a couple more minutes to settle in, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks everyone, I'm gonna be muting myself for a brief moment until we're good to go. Awesome, looks like we have a good amount of people settling in right now. Um, just a heads up that should you have any questions throughout the session, you're always more than welcome to submit them through in our Q&A tab, which is gonna be on the right side of the blue jeans window. We'll be addressing these questions during, in our Q&A session, which is gonna be at the end of this webinar. If we can't get to all of your questions today, please do not hesitate to reach out to the email alias at advertiserhelp at twitter.com for support from our awesome team. All right, let's go ahead and get started then. Well, hello everyone, my name is Iris and I'm happy to kick us off with a quick intro before we get started. My colleague, Aaron Jernigan and I will be your hosts for today's session. Um, I'm gonna be um, taking over the first half of this presentation while Aaron is gonna go ahead and close us out with the second half. So a little bit about myself. Um, I've been at Twitter for a little over two and a half years now and still counting. It's definitely been an amazing growth journey here with the company and I couldn't be any happier working ever so closely with almost 200 small medium businesses every day, helping my clients to scale their business and then grow their brand presence on our platform. So I wanna give a huge shout out to all my clients watching right now. You know who you are, You know the relationships, the partnerships I've established with you all have made my day to day so much more enjoyable and meaningful. And then as for Aaron, he's been at Twitter for almost two years now, working with our Advertising Performance Academy, which is dedicated to training client account managers. He works with a variety of different clients as well within our larger sales org to help optimize and manage campaign performances efficiently. So yeah, you, you definitely have some credible people here. Um, so you might be wondering, what are we going to be talking about today? On today's agenda, we'll be focusing specifically on direct response campaigns, and we'll show you how to literally take your performance campaigns to the next level. We will walk through our recommendation and best practices for three things today. So number one, setting up your direct response campaigns. Number two, knowing your optimization plan. And then number three, optimization levers and best practices. And for those of you just slowly joining in, just in case you missed it, we'll be addressing questions in our Q&A session at the end. So should you have any questions throughout the session, feel free to submit them in our Q&A tab on the right side of the blue jeans window. Um, you'll also wanna be on the lookout for some optional pop quiz questions throughout the presentation as well. Don't worry, we won't grade you on these. These are just in place to help reassess your knowledge today. Awesome, let's go ahead and get started. So some of you may already be familiar with the content we'll be presenting, and some of you might just be hearing these suggestions for the first time. So before we dive into the technical aspects of performance campaigns, I do wanna give a quick overview of the campaign objective that we'll be using for this. So this is gonna be our website clicks or conversions objective. Website click campaigns are optimized to drive traffic and generate conversions on your website using uh, two different ad formats. So the first one is gonna be the promoted tweet, which you can add a link to the tweet copy, as well as an image or a video. Um, this is gonna be the top tweet example in this slide. And then the second ad format, however, is our absolutely most recommended, the website card. So this is the bottom tweet example in this slide. 
As you can see, website cards are powerful ad formats that allow users to preview either an image or a video, the related context in the URL page, and then a clear call to action on the timeline as well. And then statistically, these are known to drive an average of 43% higher engagement rates, 55% higher conversion rates versus um, when you leverage a promoted tweet. So, you know, here you can really see who the breadwinner is. Um, both formats support either image or video assets, and you'll be able to track and optimize towards either link clicks or conversion. And then now that we cover the fundamentals, let's take it a step ahead and start talking about metrics along with the setup process as well. So overall performance campaigns, they tend to be our most popular campaign objectives. With that being said, we're here to give the people what they need. And that's gonna be education on how to feel success within your campaign and KPIs. So before you launch a direct response campaign, it's very crucial for you to be clear about two key elements here. So number one, what is the goal and optimization preference of your campaign? Number two, do you have proper measurement in place to assess the success against those goals and then optimize accordingly? So with that in mind, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide to see what this all entails. So as you begin to set up your direct response campaign in the campaign creation form in Ads Manager, you'll be prompted to choose an optimization preference. So you can either choose link clicks or co website conversions. And just a heads up that website conversions option in the dropdown, this is only going to appear after a conversion event has been created. So let's go ahead and move on to the next slide to see which optimization preference you should be choosing for your campaigns. So the question that you'll wanna first ask yourself is, what is the goal and optimization preference of your campaign? As mentioned earlier, you'll wanna first identify your campaign goals so that you can properly set up your direct response campaign. Is your goal to drive site traffic or is it to generate more so on-site conversions? Another question you'll wanna ask yourself is, what are you trying to achieve? So if the main goal is to drive site traffic, we would recommend setting the optimization preference to optimize towards link clicks. If the main goal is to drive on-site conversions, then there are two optimization options that we recommend testing to see which one is gonna be the most effective. So the first option, optimizing towards link clicks, this has actually been tested to be far more conducive to achieving better scale. The second option is to choose optimize towards conversions to test if this drives more conversion volume down the line. Conversion examples can be um, something like purchases, signups, downloads, etc. And then these optimization preference, they will require you to create conversion events within our dashboard. And then you'll also need to enable Twitter tags so that you can choose that key conversion that you'd like to optimize towards in your campaign. Anecdotally, we usually see lower CPC and in terms better downstream performance when advertisers choose to optimize for link clicks. We would still recommend testing out both optimization preferences, however, to see which one drives better performance and better aligns with your goals. So bottom line, if you're not seeing the results that you want, you may wanna consider testing out the other optimization preference to see if that helps. So to get the most out of your direct response campaigns, you wanna ensure that you have Twitter tags and pixels installed first on your website to track such desired actions. You know, without a clear conversion signal, you'll literally be optimizing in the dark. So that's why we recommend using our online conversion tracking tags so that you can track the number of users that convert on your website after viewing or engaging with your promoted tweet and within your specified attribution window as well. So now let's go ahead and tap into some campaign measurement products. And then this is kind of like where we'll be talking about the tags that I mentioned in the previous slide. So bear with me here. This slide can be a bit more technical than the others. So I do want to make sure that you leave here today with strong takeaways. So when it comes to installing campaign measurement tags across your campaign, we simply offer three options. The first is gonna be the universal website tag. The second is gonna be our single event tag. And the third is gonna be our third party measurement tags. The universal website tag, number one, 
that's our most recommended and common option. This is simply just a piece of code that you place once across all pages of your website domain, enabling you to track multiple downstream events that can be specified with a URL parameter rule. If you do choose to leverage the universal website tag, you'll really wanna ensure that it has been implemented across the entire website. So this includes your desktop, your mobile, your tablet, from maybe home to confirmation place, or you know, just placed in an approved third-party container tag such as Google Tag Manager, or in short, for GTM. The single event tag, on the other hand, is a specific piece of code that you place to track one unique conversion event per URL page or even just a destination. These are ideal for tracking non-page loading events, which are events that don't really result in a specific URL. For example, a single event tag can be embedded inside of a button as a non-loading page event so that every time a button is clicked upon by a user, that tag is going to fire and then track that desired action. You're more than welcome to have a mix of universal website tags, maybe throw in a little bit of single event tags in there while you're at it. Um, doing this within your conversion tracking setup, this is going to allow you to extend the number of audiences and conversion events that you wish to measure. So third, lastly, you can also enable third-party measurement options in the campaign form and then enable the following below. So within third-party measurement tags and just third-party measurement partners in general, there's gonna be three categories here. So the first is gonna be third-party container tags. The second is gonna be click trackers or UTM parameters is what we call them too. And then third is gonna be double click server to server integration. So first, we, uh, we highly recommend that our advertisers leverage third-party tracking tools such as Google Tag Manager Leveraging third-party tag partners really helps to provide that extra layer of complex and enhanced tracking capabilities on top of the Twitter pixel itself. So each partner, they have their own third-party dashboard, which they can embed the Twitter script code inside. You'll want to really rely on these third-party partners as a source of truth when it comes to site visit and conversion reporting. I'm going to go ahead and list off um, some of our verified third party partners for online conversion tracking. You can only use these verified partners as Twitter has been approved with these uh, third party partners. So there's going to be four. So the first one is Google Tag Manager. Like I said, that's going to be the most common. I work with a lot of advertisers that use this, so I highly recommend that. Um, the second is Telium. The third is Tagman by Insighton. And then the fourth is going to be called Signal. There are also um, two ways you can track conversions with double click or in short for DCM. So the first is gonna be through DCM click trackers, or like I said, what we call UTM parameters. So these are URL links that you can append on the destination page for tracking purposes. Click trackers, they fire when a Twitter user sees a promoted tweet, and then this action is gonna be passed back to the third party. These work really well when it comes to tracking post-click conversions and reporting back conversions at the card level. So the second way you can track conversions with DCM is through something called server-to-server -server integrations or something that we call impression tags. Impression tags, these give you the visibility into view through conversions and tweet level performance data. You're also able to opt in to see cross-device conversion so like, let's say you have a client um, customer that browses your products on a mobile device, but let's say they actually land on your desktop to make the purchase. So one thing I personally do want to call out is that click trackers do a way better job at tracking click through conversions than impression tags do. Whew, okay, so I know this was a lot of technical info, everyone. So thanks so much for bearing with me to sum it all up. Definitely consider setting up Twitter tags and pixels to track your conversion events. And if you can layer these on with our third party measurement options, that'd be even more ideal so that you can really unlock and layer on advanced tracking capabilities on top of our own Twitter tags. So I know this was a lot, so feel free to drop any questions that you may have within this slide or the previous slides as well in our Q&A tab or reach out to advertiserhelp at twitter.com. So now that you know how to set up your direct response campaign, 
let's go ahead and pivot into an optimization plan. When setting up a campaign, you'll wanna consider the following elements in your optimization plan. So we have platform, we have audience, and we have creatives. So number one, the platform in which your ads will serve to include two things, mobile versus desktop, iOS versus Android. So if you're targeting both mobile and desktop devices, you'll wanna split your campaigns between mobile versus desktop. And then just a quick heads up too, that mobile is a different medium than desktop. So this is usually characterized by frequent quick sessions, spur of the moment spikes, and let's say uh, purchase intent. So with that being said, conversion rates may differ on mobile versus desktop. So this is why we recommend splitting the campaigns to allow you to really test and learn the nuanced user behaviors in each medium while having that ability to make that specific campaign changes. Therefore, mobile versus desktop should be your first split in the campaign testing phase. And then uh, just a quick side note as well, when it comes to placement, I personally recommend my clients to turn off the Twitter audience platform feature, that's short for TAP, T-A-P, when they do run performance campaigns. This is because serving on only the Twitter timeline usually helps to drive more downstream conversions and then generates quality traffic. Second part with audiences, you'll want to identify the top and bottom performing audiences that you've specified with your targeting features such as keywords, follower lookalikes, interests, and etc. So here you'll really want to ask yourself, can your audiences scale? Do they have audiences that may be overlapping and causing ad cannibalization where ad groups or campaigns are competing against each other? So for smaller markets, you can consider the following options to expand scale. Um, you can run broader audience targeting to reach more users. Usually, usually interest targeting is really good at generating broader audiences. Um, or you can also just combine multiple targeting options as well. Lastly, for creatives, you'll want to split test here as well. Um, start off with three to five creatives per campaign and avoid reaching the same user repeatedly with the same ad, as this is going to really help with reducing ad fatigue, where, you know, if someone starts to see the same ad over time and again and again, their interest will start to deteriorate over time. Okay, so... When running performance campaigns on Twitter, you'll want to remember three critical steps if you're looking to drive scale and performance. So you'll really want to test, you'll really want to optimize, and from there you're, you're going to want to scale further. So in this section, we'll aim to provide campaign structures that will help you identify what works and then scale further. To do this, you'll want to first test a number of different campaigns. And then from there, once you have enough data, you will want to optimize those campaigns by eliminating what's not working and then continuing to test additional campaign elements that are winning. So then once you kind of have a good sense of what's working best, you'll want to do what you can to continue scaling those elements. So this is why we really recommend creating an optimization plan so that you can test, you can optimize, and then you can scale for success. This is an awesome slide right here, probably one of my favorites. Um, it really gets down to the nitty gritty of a whole four step plan. So the way we recommend approaching the campaign flight is through a four phase timeline of four things here. So the first step is gonna be the setup. The second step is gonna be initial testing. The third is gonna be optimizing and the fourth is gonna be scaling. So we also found that with most budgets, six weeks is actually enough time to drive performance at scale. You know, budgets, of course, will always vary across each advertiser. So, you know, with the initial setup stage, this is where you'll really want to prepare your assets and tags for tracking. The second stage, you know, as we progress into initial testing, you'll really want to wait three to five days before making edits when launching new campaigns. This is just so you're not, this is just so you're like allocating enough time for the campaign to gather enough data so that it can enhance the algorithm's prediction modeling. Making changes to a campaign too early can result in unstable performance, which will then make it a little bit more difficult to accurately assess those optimization needs. 
So once we get into the third phase, this is going to be once you start to see that the delivery is stable throughout a 24 hour period, you can then start to make changes to the campaign. Once you make changes to the campaign, the system will start to recalibrate after each adjustment, and then it will require about two to three days to stabilize from there. And then after implementing your optimizations, the final step is just to keep scaling and really honing in on what's going to work for you and your campaigns. Okay, so once you have tags set up to track conversion actions, you'll want to start considering to build out your campaign plan by using different targeting, creative, and bid combinations. You'll want to aim for um, no more than 10 campaigns that are split between desktop and mobile devices, and then assign three to five creatives there. This slide here is a great example of how you'll want to design your initial campaign flight. Just a heads up that the campaign structure will differ based on the campaign objectives. However, the structure for the website clicks and conversions objective is going to look something like this. So you can see here that this structure has been split into multiple campaigns. Under 10 is what we recommend. And then it also split tests between different devices, so mobile web versus desktop. And then platform audiences with the different targeting, you have interests, keywords, and handles. And then also with the creatives as well. So overall, the main goal is to first test, test, and test to see what works for your campaign objective. We highly recommend splitting campaigns across mobile and desktop devices, as mentioned before, just to really allow for optimizations based on performance nuances. So now that I've walked you through the fundamentals of a setup and optimization plan, I'm gonna go ahead and let my colleague Aaron take over the mic here for the second half of this session, in which he'll be showing you the optimization levers and best practices you can pull for these type of campaigns. And I know that we just went over a ton of content together, so please do not hesitate to take advantage of the Q&A tab once again so that we can answer any questions that you may have. So thank you, everyone. It was such an honorable pleasure to host the first half of this session for you. Erin, go ahead and take it away in high gear. Um, you know, just let me know whenever you're ready, and I'll jump off and let you present. Thanks, Iris. Um, let me see here. I should be good to go and ready to present. Awesome. Cool. I'm going to jump off here and then you can go ahead and start presenting. Cool. Okay. I think we should be good. Um, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Iris. Uh, again, my name is Aaron Jernigan. I work on the GAP team here at uh, Twitter. Um, and as Iris mentioned before, uh, we do have our interactive polls going uh, to help us gauge interest of how you guys typically tackle DR website performance click campaigns. And also we have our Q&A tab that uh, feel free to drop any questions uh, throughout the presentation and that we will go over after um, the presentation is done. So now that we have learned from Iris how to ensure you have proper campaign tagging on your campaigns, as well as uh, understanding the reason and purpose for the optimization plan, we will now look at different elements that will make up the structure for the testing, optimizing, and scaling approach that Iris had mentioned earlier. So once you've identified what works, now you need to be able to scale your results. Twitter ads serve using an auction uh, where advertisers bid against each other to have their ads shown to the audience they're targeting. Unlike a traditional auction, Twitter ad auctions consider not only the price that the advertiser is willing to pay, but also the quality of the ad. Each time your ad wins an auction, it will serve once to a person on Twitter, and that's how what we call an impression. So to win auctions and maximize your campaign success, your ads must have both a good probability of engagement and the highest bid amount for that impression. We call this combination your ad score, and this is what determines who will win an auction and serve ads on our platform. So in short, the higher your ad score, the larger number of impressions you'll serve. One important thing to note is that Twitter utilizes a second price auction. 
um, which ensures that you will only pay, ever pay incrementally more than needed for your ad to beat out the second place ad in the auction. So for example, if you were to bid $1.40 and beat an otherwise identical ad bidding a dollar, your campaign will only be charged a dollar and one cent if the person if if the person it was shown to makes the billable action. So in order to scale our results through the auction, we need to we need to know how to steer into what works. The way we do this is by pulling optimization levers that we have at our disposal. So here are three main optimization levers that you guys want to be familiar with to be able to uh, scale your, your performance results. We have audience, bids slash budgets, and creatives. And uh, we like to call them the ABCs. It's easy uh, to remember audience, bids slash budgets, and creative. And so from the previous slide, we learned and we now know that your ad score or your auction rank score is a function out is a function of your bid and your quality score. So what goes into quality score? Your audiences and your creatives. Serving the right ad to the most relevant audience is what will lead to a high quality score. In the next few slides, we will go, we will start diving deeper into each optimization lever so you can best be prepared to optimize and scale your results. Okay, so the first one is audience. Um, the great thing about the audience lever is the majority of the hard work comes in the campaign setup. Uh, once you have that initial proper audience structure in place, this will allow for your campaign to register enough meaningful data and it will just make your campaign kick off uh, and that initial jump start of your campaign so much smoother and easier. So some of our audience best practices we, we recommend to, uh, as Iris mentioned, test a number of campaigns, but we recommend a maximum 10 campaigns per ad account per market. And we recommend those 10 campaigns to be on a one-to-one -one ad group to campaign ratio. And we do this uh, to ensure minimal audience overlap and uh, make sure and to ensure that you do not have uh, your budget stretched too thin across too many campaigns. As far as your audience sizes, you want to make sure that your campaigns have a sufficient audience size in order to register enough meaningful data to make optimizations. Um, one thing that we recommend is to overlay exclusion targeting to boost your performance by ensuring that you reach out to the right users. And then lastly, within audiences, as we mentioned before, uh, device split. If you're targeting both desktop and mobile devices, uh, as we saw in the example previously, we recommend splitting your campaigns between the two to see which platform is really resonating well with your uh, with your audience. So this slide here shows some guidelines around uh, using different targeting types that we have available to reach audiences on Twitter. Um, the biggest thing here, the biggest takeaway is to experiment and test. One of the most important things you can do to drive continued campaign performance is understand which audience is the best fit and which messages resonate with different groups. Vary your targeting. Um, avoid running more than one campaign that targets very similar audiences as they will be competing against each other to serve. Um, and then as your campaign is live, uh, check back frequently to low performing keywords, uh, interests, handles, or um, anything like that, and replace them and refresh them with ones that are similar to high performing keywords, uh, handles, etc. So next we're going to go into bid slash budgets. Um, bid slash budgets is the most effective lever to scale or reduce your campaign's impact. Um, if you're just starting out, you want to make sure that your bid is the same as your cost per link click goal. Um, and if you don't have a clear cost per link click goal, we would actually recommend to start out with auto bid and let the campaign run for a couple days before switching to tar before switching to target cost bid um, at the cost per link goal that the campaign was delivering. Um, as far as your daily budgets, you want to ensure that you have a high enough daily budget in order to draw at least, we would recommend, 
15 to 20 conversions per campaign during that initial uh, learning period in order to make meaningful optimizations and have enough data. And then you uh, you want to make sure that you know your KP, KPI target because that would be crucial for setting your bids. And on the next slide, we will go into deeper into the three different types of bids that we have available on Twitter. So bid. So a bid is the amount that you're willing to pay per action for any objective. Uh, we have three different types. We have three different bid types on Twitter ads and which one you select will be based on your goal. A question we get asked often is which bid type should we use? Keep in mind, setting your bid is based on the value you place on each new engagement. Your bid factors into how well your campaign performs. So put thought into how much a user's engagement means to your business. The three types of bidding that we have are automatic bid, which allows the system to optimize automatically. We have maximum bid, which allows you to choose a max you're willing to pay in the auction. And then we have target cost bid, which uh, allows you to gain flexibility on reaching users while maintaining costs. An important thing to note about bid is that you want to match your bid to your targeting size. If your campaigns are targeting very specific audiences, you may need to increase your bid in order to serve. So, for example, um, something that we see advertisers may, may want, if you're an advertiser that wants to target specific geographic regions, such as zip codes or cities broken out by campaign, you may need to increase your bid on, the, on that type of campaign setup in order to win the same number of auctions as advertisers targeting less specific audiences, as there are less users in that audience. Um, and as I mentioned before, although we do have these three options, we would recommend, especially initially, to use auto bid, um, and as this will ensure your bid is competitive within the auction, and it will also auto fit to your campaign budget. Uh, with the exception of app install campaigns, bids can be adjusted at any time while the campaign is active. And then the last but not least lever that we have here is creative. Um, some of them, remember your audience on Twitter is different on Twitter and so and then they are on other platforms. So you want to be authentic. Um, some of our best practice, creative best practices are to have three to five camp creatives per campaign. Um, and this enables you to reduce ad fatigue and pre prevent the same audience seeing the same ad repeatedly over a number of different times. Um, you want to be sure you have no clickbait creative and be transparent and clear in your messaging. Um, you want to try to limit the number of additional hashtags, handles, and other clickable items within the tweet copy that could stray the user away from actually converting on the website card. Um, you also want to leverage a strong call to action. Be transparent and clear in your messaging and um, have a, a call to action that entices users to engage with the brand, such as shop now or act now. Um, and then lastly, you want to test different creative formats, include rich, engaging media. Uh, try uh, using both images and videos for more compelling content and seeing which one works and resonates better with your audience. Twitter is what's happening. So staying up to date with new relevant content increases your chances of serving. Uh, if your campaign isn't serving as many impressions, impressions as you would like, uh, one recommendation that you can do right off the bat is try swapping out your tweets if they've been running for uh, a few weeks and for fresh ones and seeing if that has an impact on your campaign. So in addition to bid here, uh, we want to keep in mind the quality score in the auction, uh, which is made up of creatives and audiences. Within creatives, the quality take score takes into account three factors, uh, which we like to call the three R's. Your resonance, your relevancy, and your recency. Are people engaging with your ad? Do they click, like, or retweet it often? Um, does your tweet content align with your audience's interests? And are your tweets fresh? Uh, have, Twitter is what's happening now, so auctions reward up-to-date content. We pr we typically would recommend to uh, look for a creative refresh anywhere between uh, that two to three week mark, or especially if you start to see some creative ads that are experiencing some uh, ad fatigue and are not uh, registering as many impressions as they once were initially. 
So thank you guys so much uh, for uh, walking with us through that. Uh, we do have the Q and A uh, tab that we were accepting questions for, as well as our polls. And now we will open the floor and start going over questions. Let me pull them up here. Okay, so and in addition, uh, if we can't get to a question that uh, we we did get a lot of questions, so if we can't get to one that is um, that was asked, you can always reach out to advertiserhelp at Twitter dot com, and we'll also we'll get uh, get your questions answered. Well. Um, the first question that we have is a good is a good one. Can someone speak to the discrepancies between reported Twitter link clicks, visit and visits reported in Google Analytics? So um, in the Twitter campaign dashboard, we're reporting on a number of we're reporting on the number of times a Twitter user clicks on a link or average or the advertiser's website card. This is logged as soon as the click actually happens in third party ca analytics campaign forms. You will also receive you will receive reporting on a number of times the user lands on your website page and stay long enough for the page to load completely. Um, some factors that could contribute to this discrepancy can include uh, your load time. For example, uh, slow cell networks. It may take longer for a link to request and a page to load. So users may exit out before loading to the actual website. Um, intent can be another. Um, users just clicking unintentionally from a mobile device um, uh, or uh, and other factors in, can include ad blockers as well as um, ITP. Um, let's see what other questions we have here. Is there a setting that will allow website cards to be visible when folks retweet your ad? Um, when a website card has has been added to your promoted only or organic tweets, the format will always render media forward if another person on the platform retweets or quotes them. Will you be emailing a recording of this session? Yes, uh, we're able to share recording. And if you'd like to receive a copy, please send shoot over an email to advertiserhelp at twitter.com uh, or just let the account manager uh, you're working with know and they'll get you on. It's definitely a content heavy deck. So definitely we encourage everyone to have a uh, copy on hand. I work with an international UN fund. I want to target via country. Can you, can I do that outside of the US? Yes, we can target outside of the US. Um, you would input your country, the countries you're looking to target inside the location form, uh, inside the location section uh, in the Twitter campaign form and you can um, target different countries there. Um, can you share a link that goes through a common tracking exercise, a, a universal website tag with Google Tag Manager and UTM variables? Um, yes, we can. We're happy to uh, share a Twitter website tag implementation guide. Um, after this session, uh, shoot a note over to advertisehelp at twitter.com and we'll be happy to send that guide to you. Definitely will be helpful. When would you use auto bid versus max bid versus target bid? This is a good question we get a lot. Um, if you value it within your campaign's performance, if you value scale or delivering in full more, we would suggest using auto bid as your bid type. Um, if you if you value hitting your KPI more, we would recommend choosing the maximum bid or the target bid. Um, and keep in mind our algorithm uses a second price auction, which ensures you will pay less than what you're actually bidding. Um, and if you don't have a KPI goal in mind, uh, just can, you know, we're here to help consult with your account team and we can get you some industry benchmarks of what we're seeing and that can kind of gauge you, uh, prepare you for what you want to bid. But initially, definitely uh, to kickstart the campaign, we would recommend uh, starting off with auto bid. Another question we have here is where can I check my ad score for each ad? Um, each ads ad score is internal only, but according to the ad score formula, uh, probability times uh, 
or the bid times the probability of a monetizable engagement, you're able to boost your score by increasing your bids or improving your uh, probability of a monetizable engagement or your, which is made up of audiences and creatives like we walked through through the presentation and uh, just really focusing on being able to enhance those and optimize those will ensure that you have a high ad score. Um, it's a lot of good questions. Is there a is there a maximum number of zip codes per ad group or campaign? Um, there is a limit of 250 zip codes per ad group in a campaign. Uh, if you need to add additional zips codes to cover the desired region, you may clone the ad group um, to add additional zip codes. Alternately, uh, you can utilize broader regions to account for a larger DMA. Um, and personally, with my accounts, I would that is sometimes better because you don't run your accounts too granular and you ensure that you have that sufficient audience size uh, that we were speaking about earlier. Um, could you go over audience targeting, how to target and versus or using formats which can zoom in or out your audience? Um, we are happy to you know discuss this in more detail and create a plan that's specifically for uh, you. Um, definitely feel free to shoot us the note and in the interest of time, I think, um, yeah, well, I would have to punt you to advertise help at Twitter.com, but we'll be helping, happy to um, walk you through targeting and come up with a plan that, uh, that suits you. Um, Can you explain a little more about what exclusion targeting is? Uh, sure thing, if if you're running a website clicks campaign um, that drives Twitter users to your web page to make a purchase and are focused on driving new users, a good way of doing this is to exclude the people who have already made a purchase on your website as those people are existing customers. Um, if you're in, interested in doing so, we would recommend creating a website tailored a website activity tailored audience by uh, one tagging your website with the universal website tag, define a purchase intent, and three creating a tailored event purchase event. But I think that and wrapping it up, those are the uh, all the questions we have time for now. But again, thank you all for coming out. We really appreciate it, um, and we hope this was helpful to you guys. Feel free to. Uh, shoot the email at advertiserhelp at twitter.com. And until the next webinar, we will see you guys soon. Thank you guys so much for coming out.